Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. I am so excited to share with you the latest batch of fragrance obsessions. These are my favorite videos to film, to like introduce you to all the things I've discovered and have been loving. Now to get started, you guys know my love for Elizabeth Grace. I talk about her all the time. I adore her. And her husband just recently launched his own fragrance brand. I'm so honored to have been sent this. Out of all the fragrances that I'm sharing with you today, I was gifted three of them, and I will of course let you guys know when I get to those. And I have to say, I am wildly impressed with the job he has done. I just wanted to give my heartfelt congratulations to Will for his first launch, Brant Genesis. First of all, the presentation is obviously gorgeous. It feels high quality, it's a weighted bottle. The branding is on point, everything from the aesthetic aesthetics, the imagery, the vision, and then of course the scent itself is stunning. This is a beautiful saffron rose sandalwood fragrance, and this is a scent that's going to work in so many different scenarios. This could easily be an impactful signature scent. It will work for date nights. It'll work practically year round. It just wouldn't be my pick for super hot days. This is a soft, sensual fragrance. This is not a bam, loud in your face, like I'm trying to take all the attention kind of scent. This smells like an airy romance to me. This is a rose scent that will appeal to people who don't typically like rose, which I I am one of those people. It's very velvety, smooth, silk-like. This is a very modern rose. The saffron lifts it up, gives it a beautiful, naturally sweet, airy texture, brings in this sensual, exotic feel, and it's lying on a bed of pillowy, creamy, sandalwood. It's an extremely smooth, seamless blend. I find this scent to be very crowd pleasing, but it's not boring at all. Like I said, it would make an impactful signature scent. It makes me think specifically of a proposal night. I'm just gonna take you along for the ride. You're gonna be here for the imagery. There's a real story behind this couple and he's been planning this day for what he feels like is forever. He's orchestrated this day full of love, full of her favorite things, memorable locations. He has gone all out and at the end of the day, the sun has gone down. He brings her to this beautiful location, walks her up to the room they're gonna be staying at that evening. She opens the door and of course, there are beautiful, luscious red rose petals covering the room. They're even sprinkled on this satin white bedding. Beautiful candlelit lighting, Frank Sinatra is playing. It's here that he asks her to be his wife. And that is the picture that comes to mind when I smell this fragrance. This is not erotic, sexy, bold, wild. This is meaningful, deep, romantic love. And with the name Genesis, meaning the beginning, it's of course the brand's first fragrance, but it's also, for me, and the imagery I get, a new chapter in this love story. Absolutely beautiful scent. This is marketed as unisex, but it does smell feminine to my nose personally. I got about four hours out of this scent with moderate projection. I've gotten a compliment from this scent and it's very fairly priced as well, $130 for a 100 milliliter bottle. For the scent, the presentation, the whole experience, I think that's an excellent price point. And although I find this to be a very likable scent, I always recommend sampling first. So they do have travel sprays available on their website as well. And as an added bonus, I'm so excited, they gave me a discount code on a 20 for 20% 20 off purely for you guys. I make no commission off of that code, it's just for you. Love Genesis, and I'm so excited to see what they come out with next. This is an impressive first launch for the brand. Next up, I have a great perfume for spring and summer for the ladies, and that is Rirana Vanilla Tea. This is such a yummy, sugary, fruity, vanilla, 
tea scent for the warmer months. I can't believe I haven't heard anyone talk about this before because it's so good. Incredibly likable scent. It's lively, girly, fun, bright, and juicy. I get this blood orange, pear, apricot, sugared puree. There's an ultra smooth, silky, creamy vanilla, and then a tea note that is fresh and just helps to tone down those sweet notes a little bit. I smell this and it makes me think of a sunny day wearing a pink, orange, or yellow flowy sundress. It's just really yummy. It's addictive. Like you will continuously be getting whiffs of this throughout the day and your mouth will start to water. I got several compliments with this one and the way this marries with your skin on those warm days, it's beautiful. It's scrumptious. You're gonna be surrounded in a cloud of sugared vanilla fruity tea. Delightful. I think this is a great beginner scent as well. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too challenging. If you're not typically into niche fragrances, this is one I would recommend checking out. And even if you are into niche, like myself, I think it's great. And I get six hours out of this with moderate projection. Next up is a really affordable unisex fragrance option. We finally have another hit from Zara, and that is Majestic Green. You will find this in the men's fragrance section on Zara, perfectly unisex. Anyone can wear this. Take a look at those notes and tell me that isn't me. Like, are you kidding me? Easy blind buy. I also wanted to note, for those of you who may be curious, that this is not a dupe for Diptyque's Eau Dwell. I have seen on Fragrantica, some people try to compare it, no. As an avid lover of Eau Dwell, as someone who has abused that fragrance in my collection, it's not a dupe, not even close. Do they share some notes? Absolutely. But I get a totally different experience from this one personally. First of all, it's called Majestic Green, Eau Dwell is way more green than this scent. This is a very likable fragrance. Eau Dwell, in my opinion, not so much because you need to appreciate that aromatic quality. Eau Dwell is more earthy, more fresh spicy, more green. This is a very likable, creamy, powdery vanilla scent. It's so smooth that this scent could be like a luxurious, body butter, body cream to me, but it has that base of a creamy sandalwood, beautiful light cardamom, and to be honest, I really don't get the cedar or black pepper. This is gonna be more simplistic to Eau Dwell, but for that reason, more people are gonna like it. It's not as challenging. I wore this to work the other day, and immediately when I walked in, two of my coworkers whipped around at the same time and they were like, oh, you smell good. And they're like, yeah, what is that? Oh my gosh. And I'm like, you know what? I'm pleased to tell you it's actually an affordable one today. They're used to asking me what I'm wearing and then hearing a niche fragrance name. So when they heard Zara, they were thrilled. One of them's a guy, one of them's a girl, and they're both like, we love that. It's been a hot minute since I found another Zara fragrance love, so I'm so excited to have discovered a new one. This will work best in the spring and fall. I get about five hours out of this one with moderate projection. Beautiful, creamy, powdery smooth vanilla at the forefront with a very likable base of sandalwood and cardamom. This next fragrance was kindly sent to me from Twisted Lily. I requested this once I tried a sample and I just about died. I smelled this and immediately I was like, Eric, get in here. I just found your new favorite scent <sighs> and found his new favorite scent. I did. I know that man. I know what he likes. We also have extremely similar tastes, which is such a bonus. And that is Juicebox Beat Cafe. First of all, I would just like to appreciate the performance on this baby. This will last all day with strong projection. This is a unisex fragrance, but definitely leaning masculine. This is sexy. Are you kidding me? Look at these notes. Wood, tobacco, cognac. I'm like, give it to me. I've heard some comparisons to Replica Jazz Club, which you know is one of my all time favorite scents. Now, I personally don't find the scents to be similar. However, the imagery that comes to mind, the mood, the occasion that you would wear these, 
same vibe. So if you like that kind of profile, but you want something stronger, this is your guy. Now you know I love my unisex scents and you know that I have some loves that are unisex leaning masculine. This is a scent that I adore, but I'm gonna be looking a certain way when I wear Beat Cafe. For me, this is a mood. This is sexy, it's bold, it's confident. We're wearing a dark outfit, some heels, boots. We're looking cool, we're looking chic. It's definitely a going out kind of scent for me. And ladies, if you like this kind of scent profile, but you wanna bring in a little bit more femininity, Layer it, layer it with a vanilla, a cherry, a saffron, lots of options here. And gentlemen, if you have not tried this before, you absolutely need to. Eric and I blew through this sample and when he loves a scent, he gets on my case and he's like, when are we getting that bottle? When is it coming in? I feel like the notes listed accurately represent what you're gonna get from this scent a beautiful, rich tobacco, smooth, sexy cognac and leather with a base of wood. It's a bit ambery. There's some fresh spiciness to the scent. It has a lot of character. It smells like a night out at the bar. Some good old music on a record is playing. Absolutely love it. And if you're interested in a bottle, or sampling it first, you can use my code on a 10 for a discount on Twisted Lily. Next fragrance is from a brand that I've been seeing circulating around the internet, and that is from Mind Games, and this is Double Attack. I tested a handful of their fragrances, all the ones that interested me, and this one was by far my favorite. Castling is another very good one, specifically for you fig lovers, which is not me, but even I was, kind of like debating it for a second because it was really good. But yes, I tested this, like immediately bought it and then thought to myself, girl, when are you gonna wear that? We're literally going right into summer. This is a fantastic fall and winter fragrance. So just prepare yourselves because I will be talking about this a lot. More so when we head into the cooler months again. It is such a cozy, warm, spicy, yummy fragrance. It's not listed on Fragrantica, but literally on the bottle it says bitter chocolate saffron. This is a wow factor cold weather scent. I'm gonna give you a couple of comparisons just to get a general idea of what you might get from this fragrance. In the first five minutes, that is where I get the saffron the most prominently. And the saffron is going to pull quite similarly to another saffron fragrance that we know. There's an airy sweetness, you know what I'm talking about. Just a hint of that. And again, that's fleeting. I'm getting that in the first five minutes, but it's paired with these other gourmand notes, some spices. Then that vanilla, chocolate, pink pepper, bitter orange creep through a bit more. And this is a very likable take on those notes. This is not a heavy chocolate to me. It's not super thick or bitter. It's a dark chocolate, but there is an airiness to the scent. Vanilla and agave to sweeten it up, pink pepper and cinnamon bringing in that warm, spicy factor. And I'm usually not a fan of orange chocolate combos. They smell good, but I'm just not really into the idea of smelling like that particular kind of candy or a chocolate orange cake. I don't know, the pairing isn't usually something I personally wanna wear, but it works so well in this scent. I think because it isn't a flat out gourmand and because it's a bitter orange, the chocolate is more airy, so it's, it's not like a literal chocolate orange candy. And I'm also only experiencing that orange more so in the opening. As it dries down, we're going into the family of Replica by the Fireplace, which I love that idea, the concept, the mood, but that scent is too smoky for what I'm looking for and also smells more like a setting or a candle, whereas this is the kind of fragrance I've been looking for. It literally smells like fall, winter, cozying up by the fire. There is this smoky factor, but it's not too loud. And that's supported by a creamy yet dry sandalwood and vetiver. It almost smells like there could be a slight boozy note in here as well. Fantastic fall, winter fragrance for both men and women. It's a long lasting scent with moderate projection. And then Charlie, or Phoenix sent me a sample 
full of Eau d'Italy Morn to Dusk. Now you know I love Kaoli Vanilla 28, Guerlain Spiritus de Livigny. Those are my tried and trues in my collection for more of your super vanilla focused scents. But this is a different take on vanilla. Spiritus de Livigny is giving that vanilla extract with incense and some benzoin. Kaoli Vanilla 28 is of course a vanilla orchid, brown sugar, amber wood. This is your fluffy powdered sugar vanilla. This smells like a cloud. It's fluffy, airy, light. This is amazing for layering or if you want an addictive, straightforward kind of vanilla scent. And I feel like most of us have those kind of dates. Like sometimes I just want to smell like freaking vanilla. It's a no fuss kind of scent, easy grab and go. You're gonna smell absolutely mouth-watering. The compliments are gonna be rolling in. Note-wise, I'm only getting vanilla and musk, but it's specifically how these notes are done where just immediately I was like, I have to have it. You wanna smell yummy, wear something that's inoffensive. Not only is it inoffensive, you're just flat out gonna smell scrumptious. You can wear it day to day, wear it to work. It's gonna work practically year round, except it would struggle in the winter. The sillage sits close to the skin and I get about four hours out of this one, so make sure you overspray, but it is worth the experience for me. To me, this smells similar to an elevated version of a vanilla bean Noel. It's not as dense and creamy, it's more airy and fluffy and smells more refined, but that is, you know that's an addictive scent right there. And I'm not gonna lie, when I wear this, I do be smelling like a sugar plum fairy from the Nutcracker, obviously. This next fragrance I teased in my last video, and that is a new launch from Unui Nomad, and this is Sugar Leather. This is a good, elevated, sexy, gourmand, fall, winter fragrance. If you are afraid of the note of leather, you don't need to be with this. It is so ridiculously smooth. To me, it just adds this base that's gonna give the fragrance umph, some character, some sass. It's warm, ambery, there's this decadent caramel covering this whole scent, and a really yummy spiced cinnamon, which you guys may know is a note that's iffy for me. What I really appreciate is that it is isn't so overpowering, spicy, and dry in this scent. Very easily cinnamon can overtake a scent for me. It's balanced so well in here, and it's not listed, but I do get a bit of a almost cherry-like booze in this scent. Now this fragrance reminds me of another scent that I love in my collection, and that is Soradora's Mendorle. So if you already own one, you may not need the other. All depends on you and what you're looking for for your collection. If you really love this kind of scent profile, you may be wanting both. Mendorle is definitely gonna be giving you way more of a cherry feel. You have the almond in there, and it's gonna take you through three three distinctive phases in that fragrance, whereas I get more of a linear experience with this scent. If you love Mendorle and you want another kind of rendition of that scent, check this out. If you liked it, but maybe one of the stages wasn't to your taste or the cherry wasn't quite for you, I would highly recommend checking this out. I think this is gonna be a top seller for the brand. It's fantastic, especially come specifically fall and winter. Like this is it for your date nights going out. It's sexy, confident, perfectly unisex. It has those yummy, addictive gourmand elements without being full on foodie. It's very warm, deep, rich. It's a good badass kind of scent. It's long lasting and sillage is moderate. This was kindly sent to me from the brand. This is my official first love from the house. And if you want a discount code for this or samples, you can use on a 10. Next up is the fragrance for spring and summer for the ladies, and that is Giardini di Toscana Bora Bora. I cannot even express to you how much I adore this scent. This has shot up to one of my top favorite tropical floral perfumes. This and Ylang and Gold are my top favorites. This is the most 
stunning sugared fruity vanilla elegant creamy tropical floral fragrance this blew my mind when I smelled this. This just took my breath away. When I first smelled this, I was holding back from buying a bottle on the spot, but I told myself, no, you're gonna be wearing this for a full day. You're gonna wait for that dry down because sometimes the opening will have me and then it will just transition into a like as it dries down. This is a love through and through. This smells so expensive and luxurious and it's $135 for a 100 ml. Performance is great, eight hours, moderate projection. I was in the most beautiful, elegant, ethereal cloud of the creamiest, yummiest, ylang ylang, tiari flower, fluffy powdered sugar, creamy vanilla. I'm sorry I keep saying creamy, it just, <laughs> It's what it is. There's also coconut milk in here, which is obviously adding to that factor. The apricots in here are so juicy. I feel like I'm biting into the most heavenly apricot. Like it's growing out of the Garden of Eden. By the way, for those who are curious seeing that jasmo lactone note, it's described as a very rich floral lactone. It has a jasmine petal-like character with a delicate fruitiness reminiscent of peach apricot and coconut milk. That's what it is. There's a base of a clean, fluffy musk, a light caramel. I feel like my best self wearing this. I feel beautiful wearing Bora Bora. For any of you who love floral perfumes, fruity perfumes, vanilla perfumes, coconut perfumes, you want that tropical vibe. You wanna smell elegant, rich, classy, but people are gonna be drooling, smelling this on you. It's simply the one to try. I'm head over heels for this. It's unreal. Honestly, I feel like just about any woman would love this. Suits a huge age range. And I will note as well that although the florals do last throughout the whole life of the fragrance, they do tone down a bit, mesh, blend with the other notes as it dries down on your skin more. This next one, I've gotten a lot of questions about and rightfully so. I mean, you know, I have a great love for a particular scent from this house. So, when the Seven Virtues launched Coconut Sun, you know I had to try it. I literally blind bought it. I never, I hardly ever <laughs> blind buy. Well, first of all, I never blind buy anything that's over $100. Secondly, the notes, hello. I felt very confident doing so. Thirdly, Sephora has an amazing return policy. This baby isn't going anywhere. I love it. This is everything Summer Anna loves. You know I'm obsessed with coconut when it's done right. And this is such an, a luxurious, smooth, cooling, refreshing coconut water. Love that note, fantastic, beautiful. There's frangipani and jasmine. There's a, a slight warmth to it. It pulls me in two different directions because the coconut water and the salt kind of bring in this refreshing tone, but then you can also detect that bit of warmth from the florals. It's creamy, feminine, happy. It smells like a vacation. And I love when salt is done in this particular way, when it's, there's just a tinge of that. I love a light amount of that note, but not when it adds a mineral factor to a note, when it, it really dominates, then it's not usually my thing. And then there's a creamy, smooth, lightly sugared vanilla. I smell this and I swear I can I can smell myself in this adorable cute little like tiki hut situation on vacation on a luxurious island white sand clear blue waters the dolphins are waving at me from the ocean beckoning me to come in I'm wearing a freaking seashell necklace anklet braids in my hair terrible tan lines it's the vibe instantly puts me in a good mood and instantly makes me ache for a vacation. Like I need time away. This takes my mind to a faraway place. It puts me at ease. Like I, I can't possibly be in a bad mood smelling like this. Another hit from The Seven Virtues. And I get four hours out of this one with moderate projection. Very likable 
pretty scent. And the last fragrance I'm gonna feature for today is Valentino Uomo Intense. And this is an absolute staple in any man's fragrance collection. This is unisex leaning masculine. I still love to wear this, specifically because the inclusion of tonka bean and vanilla makes it wearable for me. But if I want to enhance that vanilla factor a bit, this is the kind of fragrance to layer with it. Because I tried, you know, throwing on like a KLE Vanilla 28 and usually, I mean, it's fantastic. It goes with just about anything. But that type of vanilla isn't the same type of vanilla that's used in here. The vanilla in here is this powdery light vanilla, which is gonna pair up more nicely with this type of vanilla. Same thing with the new Fenty Vanilla Body Butter. Gorgeous pairing. So if you like this scent, wanna make it a little bit more feminine, there are some combos. But listen, I love this. I think it is so sexy. This has a prominent note of iris and it smells like a dark iris. There's also a leather and it's so smooth. I swear, like the combo of the leather iris vanilla is just a match made in heaven for me. I love the juxtaposition between some masculine characteristics in this scent as well as the hint of feminine because you have this powdery, light vanilla, kind of lipsticky iris with the masculine, smooth, sexy leather and sage. It smells like your boyfriend's leather jacket. After you've been with him all day, like you get that hint of that feminine makeup yumminess tied in with that masculine energy. It's long lasting, has great sillage. This is the kind of scent that just makes my eyes roll to the back of my head. You wear this and people are gonna wanna just bury themselves in your chest. This is a Netflix and chill kind of fragrance. It's sexy, cozy, comforting, smooth. I've tried a good amount of fragrances from the Uomo line, and this is by far my favorite. I honestly think it's a masterpiece of a designer scent, and I love this bottle. Beautiful, so cool. Gentlemen, if you wanna get someone's attention, wear this. Also, it's an extremely versatile scent, and for the ladies who appreciate a unisex leaning masculine scent, I just think it's sexy. I love it. So that wraps up my latest obsessions. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.